Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Distinguished elders, scholars, counselor, maybe counselors, who knows? Certainly some future counselors. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm overwhelmed by the turnout here on this inclement evening for the official launch of our campaign to capture Rochdale in the by-election on the 29th of February. My good wife Gayatri is behind me, my eldest son Zayn, who lives in Manchester, is at the top of the stairs. I tried to persuade him to come and give a speech, but he's not quite ready <laughs> to take my place. I'm overwhelmed by the generosity of my good friend Imtiaz and his family, all of his brothers, all of his sister-in-laws, all of whose children have made this place and the place next door where I'm going to ask you to go at the end of this meeting, available to us, indeed handed it over to us, the most auspicious campaign headquarters I've ever had in more than 50 years of politics and fighting elections. I'm overwhelmed by the warmth of the Rochdalian welcome that I receive as soon as I step through outside that door. It takes me quite some time to get down even the smallest street. Now, I know that none of you would ever darken the doors of a bookmaker's. <laughs> but if I tell you that the bookies had me at 16 to 1 to win this seat on Friday, and by Tuesday evening, it's 2 to 1, you can be sure that if you have any friends, if you have any foolish friends that go into bookmakers, they've lost their opportunity. Two to one isn't much of a price, but it is indicative of three things that I want to address you on this evening. His Excellency Peter Ford, former British Ambassador, I welcome greet you. You're a great asset to us as the deputy leader of our party. The Three things are this, and they are obvious. All the press in the press conference asked me this obvious question. Why are you here? Well, the obvious answer is because I'm a political leader and there's a by-election. And it's my job to take our political message everywhere in the country. And obviously this is an opportunity uh, to do that. Tony Lloyd was a friend of mine for 40 years. I'm very sorry indeed that he has passed and passed so very quickly. But of course, after the demise of a member of parliament, there has to be a by-election. The people need to be represented. Andrew Dai, former member of the European Parliament, also I greet you. Thank you. The by-election was not chosen by me, uh, but I have a duty and a responsibility to give voice to the thousands, I believe tens of thousands of people who want to have their say on what's happening in Gaza. I have been fighting the Palestinian cause for more than 50 years. That is the entire lifetime of at least half, maybe three quarters of the people in this hall. The entire lifetime. I first went to see the Palestinians in the refugee camps in Beirut in 1977 in a brief pause in the Lebanese Civil War. I met the late President Arafat. He took a liking to me. When everyone else left, I decided to stay. And I was there for many months. 
living in two camps that later became famous for the worst possible reason. The two camps were Sabra and Shatima, which in 1982, while I was in Beirut, were invaded and yet another massacre of Palestinian refugees took place. Actually, I would have stayed in Beirut in 1977, but Arafat ordered me back to Britain. He said, we need you far more in Britain than we need you here in Beirut. So you have to leave and go back and get involved in building for our cause in Britain. And I promised him that I would never, as long as God gives me breath, leave the Palestinians alone. And that's a promise I have kept. Nobody, nobody could doubt that, even my worst. I found to my astonishment that the only way you can be born in Rochdale is if you're unlucky enough to give birth in the taxi on the way to Oldham. <laughs> Rochdale has been renegated so much that, that actually nobody, nobody will ever again be able to say they were born in Rochdale. Doing a guard on us. Actually, yeah. I mean, talk about ethnic cleansing. There'll be no more Rochdaleans. Maybe that's the plan. But we will not put up with it. I give you this pledge that I will not give them one moment's peace until we have restored maternity services here in Rochdale and the A and E also. And the A and E also. Listen, Allah, if you fell down and broke your head in the center of Rochdale, you'd have to count on an ambulance reaching you and taking you to Oldham for emergency treatment. What kind of feat is that for a town that was once proud? I met a man last night, I walked with his name, he might not want me to, so I won't take the chance. He used to be proud to tell people he was from Rochdale. Now he says he's from Manchester. Because, because, because of the way that Rochdale has been allowed to decline. Now, nobody asked me tonight a question, but I'm going to raise it. I'm expecting, indeed there's a candidate standing precisely on this question. I'm expecting the grooming story to be a feature in this by-election. By the grace of God, I have six children, five of them young children, and my oldest child has five children. There's a lot of us. We'll be around for a long time, inshallah. You said you wasn't brown? <laughs> Listen, the culture I come from, if you don't have six children, people think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so nobody more than me finds grooming and pedophilia and sexual abuse of children and young people more repugnant. Nobody hates that more than me. But it has nothing to do with the color of the face of the person who committed it. Nothing at all. They do these things because of the blackness of their hearts. Blackened by depravity. Not the color of their face. That well known Asian Muslim Sir Cyril Smith was one of the earliest groomers. The Reverend Paul Flowers, formerly of this parish, was not a Muslim. Jimmy Savile wasn't an Asian. Most of these sordid offenses committed in Britain are committed by people who look like me, not people like most of you. It has nothing whatsoever 
to do with the color of the face, still less the religion of Islam. And I will be your defender against Islamophobia, against racism, against bigotry, discrimination, and you know that. You know that I will be, and you know that I can do it. MashaAllah, I have a voice that's hurt, that nobody can ignore, and I'm ready to use it for you. And like Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm coming to the end of my political career. Coming towards the end, like Cristiano. But I can still score goals, I promise you. Thank you very much indeed for coming here this evening. Victory on the 29th. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. In our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In it, I'm discovering things here that I have never seen before. And I was an I was an MP in Glasgow. I was an MP in Bradford. I was an MP in East London. But I'm discovering things here that I never saw even in those places. We're special, George. Yeah, special. I was in a restaurant today. The building is owned by one Labour councillor. The restaurant's owned by another Labour councillor. And they got a dodgy planning permission from a group of other Labour councillors. How's that? How's that? Boycott Labour! Boycott Labour. That is the hashtag. Boycott Labour. Both nationally and locally. Because they're not fit for purpose. And we've got to wipe the town hall clock clean. If we win this on the 29th, we've got to take that momentum forward to make a complete change here. First time, they kind of had to come to me because there were only a very few of us. You could have fitted uh, the entire movement in solidarity with the PLO. You could have fitted them into this room. Now you couldn't fit them into Hyde Park. In our thousands, in our millions, now we are all Palestinians. Isn't that the truth of it? And so, more and more, I became absorbed uh, in the Middle East, in the Muslim world, in Kashmir, in Pakistan. I hold the two highest civil awards in Pakistan, the Hilali Pakistan and the Hilali Qadi Azam the latter for my contribution to the restoration of democracy in Pakistan and the former for my work on Kashmir. So between Pakistan, Kashmir, Palestine, I have been a part of this community. I have spoken at your meetings. I have taken you to Gaza. I've taken some of you to the European Parliament in Brussels to lobby for Kashmir. I took some of you to Westminster to lobby for Kashmir at Westminster to their members of parliament through my national lobby on Kashmir. So when people say to me, why are you here? Well, because I feel at home here. I feel that I'm a part of you and you are a part of me. I'm not a foreigner here, whatever a foreigner means in Rochdale. I'm not a foreigner. My daughter was born in Greater Manchester during the Gorton by-election. Some wag suggested we call her Gorton <laughs> as a vote-winning ploy, but she'd never have forgiven me for that. As I said, two of my sons live here, and for my sins, I'm a supporter of Manchester United. So this is my 
this is my this is my hunting ground. This is my manor. And I feel at home here. And I certainly have been welcomed so wholeheartedly here that the bookies are probably right in the price they are now putting on the contest. But that's not the only reason why I'm here. Although it's a big reason, and it's a good reason. Why should the people here reward Labour with an election victory? Could you really bear to see Keir Starmer dancing with delight because his candidate was able to win in Rochdale after all that Starmer has done? Surely, boycott them. Yeah, well that's right. We, we boycott McDonald's. We boycott Starbucks. Why shouldn't we boycott Labour? They're all supporting genocide in Gaza. How would it look? How would it look to your children, your grandchildren? How would it look to the people in Pakistan, in Kashmir? How would it look to the people in Gaza? That we had a chance here to punish the genocide enablers, collaborators, but we didn't take it. I'm asking you to keep that thought in your mind, in your heart. How will you feel if you see Keir Starmer dancing with delight? I'll tell you what it would say. It would say to the British political leaders that it doesn't matter what you do, how many Muslim countries you invade, how many Muslims you kill, how many disasters you bring on the Ummah, they'll still vote for you. Well said. Well now, said. I'm sorry to put it that way, because I know it's hurtful, but they would be right if that was what happened. But I don't believe that that is what's going to happen. So it's not the only reason, but it's a big reason. And my 50 plus years in this cause, in the causes that matter to you, I was one of the leading figures in the movement against the war in Iraq. They called me Saddam's friend. And people said to me, why didn't you keep your opposition to Tony Blair and the Iraq war down a bit? Turn the gas down a bit on it. And if you do, if I had, I might still be a Labour MP. I might, I might have been on the front bench. But I could not do so because I was, perhaps uniquely, the only Member of Parliament who knew for certain that they were lying that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. And knowing that, how could I do any other? than call Blair the liar everyone now knows him to be. And that's not history, by the way, because Tony Blair is still running the Labour Party. True. Keir Starmer, yeah, Keir Starmer is Tony Blair without the laughs. He's, he is worked by Tony Blair, Peter Mandelson, Alistair Campbell, all these war criminals are right at the center of Keir Starmer's Labour Party. And who would want to give them a victory when we could do something about it? By the way, there's some kismet involved here. I won the Bradford West by-election on the 29th of the month. Yeah. I'm fighting Brother, thank you. I see many friends actually from that campaign and I'm glad to see them. This campaign is also on the 29th. But here's the ace card. There are 29,000 Muslim voters in Rochdale. If they all come out and all vote for me, we'll have the biggest landslide by election victory that anyone has ever had in British politics. Yeah. Of course they can't and won't all come out and they won't 
all vote for me. And that's fine. <laughs> Inshallah. That's fine. Because we are fighting for the votes of everybody in Rochdale. I said last night late on uh, X on Twitter, I am the candidate best placed to bridge the gap or gaps between the different communities here in Rochdale for obvious reasons. I have mass support amongst the Muslim population. I'm also white British and working class and the leader of the Workers' Party. I thought you were brown. <laughs> Some of them think I'm brown. Somebody asked me, why, why do some white people not like you? I said, for the same reason they don't like you. <laughs> they think I'm you. But we'll be out amongst the white working class people in Rochdale and saying the reasons why Rochdale has slipped down every division, every table, has been relegated over and over again is not because of Abdul who runs the store on the corner or Amjad who has a car showroom. It's labor that has put you here. It's the Labour Council and it's mismanagement, corruption and incompetence that is the reason why Rochdale is in the place that it is. And isn't the football club's fortunes a metaphor for the town? <laughs> Rochdale FC? Rochdale FC? One of the supporters is here. They were a fixture of the football league. They were in the top divisions of the football league for a hundred years. And now they're not even in the league. Up the deal. Yes, up the deal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, it was a wonderful launch ceremony of the campaign for the by-election on the 29th of February. Um, I thank uh, George Galloway very much. I have known him for more than 30 years and he is the only one who has always spoken for Palestine and Kashmir. And he has given all the support all his life to the cause of Palestine and Kashmir. I wish him all the best and support him in this election. And inshallah, he will win on the 29th of February, inshallah. Good luck.